The slave trade started around 1445 by a man called Prince Henry, the navigator of Portugal. And the trade ended in Africa in 1870. That will give you 400 years in slavery. guys this fabulous this production and we are here in badagri to check <coughs> the, bra uh, the brazilian barracon so it's over there you see this artifact you see the artifact inside and you see how they um they design this place so we're going to check inside and how slaves have been trade we're going to check the rooms inmates and how they harbor prisoners so let's go there let's go. Uh, we have 40 rooms in the compound and 40 slaves in each of the rooms. But the government met with the family that they should return to sell the way it were. They now gather most of the relics and some of the items they used on slave and kept that people all over the world comes around here to view. But when the European came to Africa, we Africans, we have our own currency, the kind of money that we use for transaction, buying and selling them. But the European refused to accept those kind of money from our forefathers and the NAP said they prefer to do a trade, known as trade by butter. And trade by butter simply means a change good for good. Like now, but when they came, let me quickly mention four types of money that we use in the old days. In the old days, they used tobacco. Tobacco were used to produce cigarettes in those days, but we use it as a form of money. They what you call yala salt. It's a white precious stone. They, they what you call manila. If you look at our 100 and the other Karaulos logo, you notice a green star. In the middle of the side, there's a ring. Then if you turn it around, you see, see two at the below of the 100 Naira. We call it Manila. Portuguese use Manila as in form of money in the olden days, and our forefather to use Manila. Then the last one is called cowrie shell. Let me show you the cowrie. Yorubas call it Oweyo. And you can, as you can see, these are some of the currency. And you can find this beneath the sea. So Oweyo. So, but European now refuse to accept this as in for money, they say they cannot do business with them with this, that they should do a trade known as trade by butter. And trade by butter simply means a chain good for goods. And these were some of the European products that were used in a chain for the slave in the olden days. Like in the olden days, if the European give our forefather one umbrella, they collect 40 human beings as a slave. And up to date, we sell the survival umbrella for 40 slaves inside the museum. I will show you. Now, then we are told that when they came, they came with three of these umbrellas. The one is here. Then when you get to Bini Kingdom, in Jaja of Bobo Kingdom, you still see one umbrella. But the third one, we don't know where about, where about of the third umbrella. But we have the first one here. It was made of iron, cane, bronze, and silk. Now, if the European given a bottle of whiskey, they collect 10 human beings as a slave for a bottle of bottle. Then we have a bottle of 1873 from Vienna, Austria, inside the museum. I will show you guys later. These are called cannon gun. The long cannon go for 100, the short one 40. It was made of iron. If the European give our forefather a dent gun, they collect 40 human beings. Now, we Africans or black men, what would we do with the dent gun and the cannon? We use it to fight ourselves, so to get more slaves to set the European. I used to tell you that comes that we are the ones that sold ourselves into slavery. A ceramic bowl, we call it breakable plate in the house. The European will give you one plate, and they collect 10 human beings. As a slave, and we have five for such places that I'm going to show you guys later. Mirror and the beads, it depends your bag, we start bargain power. You can say two slaves, I can say three, she can say seven. It depends how you can bargain and negotiate with European for mirror and the beat. When the man that owned the compound became the Seriki Muslim of the Kingdom, the bradis was given to him by the Brazilian, and the Ketu was given to him by the Europeans. Now, so I hate to run about around you while you see this statue. Standing at the runabout, he founded the time in 1902 for the replacement of Egbado, victim of war. Then, and the name that Spain gave to him was Ifare Mileku. Today, how comes we call him Seriki Williams Abbas? Abbas was the first master 
But he later resold him to a white man called Williams, who took him down to Brazil. The white man taught him how to read and write, but later gave him freedom and built this company in 1840. In 1895, he became the Seriki Musulumi of Badagi Kingdom. Because slaves bear their master's name, that is why we call him Seriki Williams Abad. The name of the first one, the second one, the title that he had, his own bad name, Ifara Emileku, disappeared because they have no name. They bear their master's name. And that era, we have two categories of slaves. We have a domestic slave and field. Domestic work in their master's house, while the field work on the farm or on the plantation. Now, right from here now, I'm taking you to see the two out of the 40 rooms that we have in this compound. We'll be seeing two rooms the way it were then, and we are 40 human beings will be for three to four months. Okay, so we are in front of the, the rooms, and you're going to see how these rooms are. And don't forget, 40 inmates will be in one room. So let us check it out. Follow me. <laughs> so what we are doing here, we are just trying to showcase this clothing. This cloth is called regalia. And this regalia was given to this man called Seri Kibilansa by Brazilian friends. And the clothing is over 200 years of age. And you can see the same cloth that he wore in that black and white picture over there. This staff of office was given to him by one governor known as Governor Williams McGregor of Lagos County in 1902, recognizing him as a leader then. And that's a movement to the point of note. You can see we call it single file. In the then mostly the chain will be on their necks and they will all usually tie their hand at the back. Now, over here, we call this thing iron muzzle. They use the iron muzzle to cover the mouth of the slave. Because slaves were allowed to eat and drink water once in a day. The reason why they were not well felt, the Europeans believed that if they give them too much of food, they have a stamina or energy to revolt. So they don't want something to happen or occur. They have to cover their mouth with this thing called iron muzzle. But if the Europeans don't want to use this to cover the mouth of the slave, sometimes they used to pierce the upper leaves and the lower leaves. They will not apply padlock. Now, this picture tell a lot of stories. Look at these two guys. They are slave raiders, and they want to capture this man as a slave. The man got knife, and he stabbed himself to death. That said that, that slavery was so obnoxious to say how terrible slavery was then. I used to tell you that death even better than to be a slave, because a lot of people don't even know the meaning of slave. When they see somebody slave, you now have access to education, food, no good food. You put on 30 cloth rags. So it's a terrible experience that happened to we Africans, most especially the blacks Africans. Now, these pictures over here, this is a building where Seriki Abari started, but the building has collapsed in the 1995. It's to be in the 1847, and this is one of the door of the building. But that will be the last place I'll be showing you guys in this compound. And these bricks are called burnt bricks. Today, the compound that we are today the compound will be in the face by the family. Originally, what you see is these bricks, both outside this way. You see the bricks round both the floor, but because the building has been defaced by the family, that's why they have to plaster the compound so that the building will still have a stamina and strong. So these are called bonds, bricks. And these are some of the ancient pucks where the man kept most of his documents in those days. But we didn't know how many slaves they used to collect these box that we have seen. So, Yorubas call this clothing Asho Etu. And this Asho Etu today also is over 200 years of age, owned by this man called Seriki Williams Abbas. If I remember. Now, now, this is a picture of the young man that was telling the story outside, the one that was captured at the age of six, if I remember. This is the picture. You know, I told that he had education with the second owner, Williams. And here we make the photocopy of his handwriting. When he sold a piece of land to some cotton, it was 16 pounds in the year 12 to 1916. Now, this were the council of members that they are ruling there because this man was ruling from here up to Laro and Orile Gomu of them. Now, this very umbrella that the slave boys here was carrying on the head of the ships here, this is surviving umbrella for 40 human beings. This umbrella was made of iron, cane, bronze, 
and sick and it's very very heavy as you can hear the sound it should be it should be about you can see you see it should be about 25 to 30 kg you can see very heavy it was made of a bronze and you can see the bronze and this is wood wood heavy strong wood then silk now the, they use it you can see cane you can see the cane there is another bronze and you can see the iron for the hunger you can see and bronze so this umbrella go for 40 human beings as a slave and the question is this do you guys think this word for slave? No. The umbrella does not make for the sunshine, not for the rain. Why the chief or the king or the imam is outside? You see somebody carrying an umbrella on their head. It's just to show their status in the society. And this is a 40 human being. And it's terrible. Now, we call this one ankle shackle. They use this to join two slip together. In the plantation, where the slaves used to work, it should be a very large farmland so that they will not be able to escape from the plantation because the general overseer is taking care of maybe 200, 100 slaves. There are no more than two or one. So they have to pull this at the anchor of the first slave. And this straight rod will pass. Then to the ankle of the second slave. They will now lock it with their own padlock here so that they will not be able to escape. And because this thing was made of raw iron, most of them to put wounds around the ankle of the slave. Who okay. Because they were slaves, the next day, they're still going to put it on their ankle. Now, look at these three men standing here. They were slaves. If you guys notice the one in the middle, there's a chain being tied on the way. That's why they had a chain on the neck and the hand. You can see that they still put chains on the neck, and you can see this chain that we put around the waist. That shows that the guy is a stubborn slave. Any slave that is stubborn, they have to put, we call it waist chain around the, the ribs. So after some time, it will calm the slave down, so that will be less aggressive fighting other slaves or those who want to buy him. Now we have one of the chains, but we don't know the chain. Now, you can see that this chain is wearing out, it's going gradually. Yeah. This is for one slave. We don't know the age of this chain that I'm holding. And they put it around the waist of a stubborn slave. They will lock it so they just to calm the slave down so it'll be less aggressive. Now, over here, these are some shackles, some chains in here. Now, this item number seven, we call it iron draining bit. It has two functions. Now, what's your name again? General. General. Like now, if I'm general slave, my name should be general. Because in order to slave bear the master's name. Yeah. Most of the time they put this inside the fire and they will heat it very well. Once it turns red, they now used to write general on my checks or at my pack. We call it brandy. Because slave kept here, we are owned by different owners. Okay. For identification, you have to brand your slave with red hot iron. Then secondly, there's some slaves. We call them runaway slave. Today you run, tomorrow you run. The master of shaders will bring the slave and they'll bring out one of his legs. You know, our leg have a thumb. Yeah. In the middle of the thumb, they'll put this iron drill in between here and they will drill it down. They will now force the leg open. Or they use machete or an axe. They'll cut off they chop up one of the toes of the slave so that the slave will not be able to run or escape again. If you guys have watched the film called The Root by Halek Saleh, Kinta Kinte, similar to the guy in the movie. Now, they use this one to kill the slave. A white man will say lynch. Later, I'm still going to tell you how they used to lynch the slave with this iron back. And then these two iron here used to be the back wheel of chariot. That thing was normally pulled owns by this man called Sereki William Sabas. And that smaller chain over there we are used on children. We are told that during this slavery in Badagri, children, we are being given out as extra fisijara. That is, if you buy like 100 or 200 slaves, they give you two children for you to come back and have your slave inside. Right now, we have the rooms, all the 40 rooms in this compound used to be like a smaller, a smaller room like this. The in there, 40 will be there. We call this place inspection room. 
if Europeans come to buy slaves here, they, the one of the slaves will be standing the way I'm standing. They will check the eyesight, they will look at the dentition, hear the slave, and turn the slave around. They will examine if he or she is fit because they are going to, they are going to walk where they're taking. So they want a very fit slave. Any slave about 35, they call them Macron. They don't want those kind of slaves. They want a very young child that could walk here. Now we are going in to see the smaller room where 40 will be. And okay, so you're welcome. Now, look at that small window over there. Provide ventilation for 40 human beings that will be here for three to four months. This is where the wee wee and popo then. Imagine the odor, the heat. Imagine mosquito bite, and imagine how many of them will have died there. That's the reason why when people come there, I used to say that you guys are not here to catch fun, but just to feel the pain the people in the past have felt. And each of this ceramibo go for 10, 10 human beings. It doesn't matter the size. Once European give you one ceramibo, they'll collect 10 human beings as a slave. Now, over here, these three pots were originally made from Yoruba's land. Now, the first pot, you know, the Muslims, if they want to have their prayer, they wash their face, leg, and we call it ablution. This way, they used to keep silky about that for ablution, or if you want to take his bed, then here, this way, you just put his soup, and, uh, and then he's drinking pot. Now, at your back here, now, these are the cowrie shell, the money, some of the money I show you guys outside. And when the man became the Seriki Muslimi of Baragi Kingdom, European that are doing the trade gave him this jug as a gift during his coronation as a Seriki Abbas. And the bread this was given to him by the Brazilian that are doing the trade. And then look at this bottle. If you look, if you guys look closely at the body of the bottle, you see 1870 be customized on the body of the bottle. This is a 10 human. European will give our father that 10 bottle of uh, one bottle of whiskey and they collect 10 human beings as a slave. Now, those black round things, we call them records. Those are the old Indian records. What we use now is called CD or DVD. Mm -hmm. But in the olden days, those are the records they use for music. Mm -hmm. Now, we used to call the engine gramophone, but we didn't know how many slaves they used in a chain for that uh, CD or record to say. Now, right from here now, we will be paying a visit to see the second cell and see what you have inside. You see, gonna bend your head while slaves will be here for three to four months. And look at that small window for ventilation. Now, these are some of the old in this iron carcass sheet they use for the roofing. Then you can hear the sound. You can see that it's different from what we produce now. What we produce now is very, very light. And this is what we produce. And you get 15 of these light ones inside this heavy one. And up to date, in some part of the building, we still have this heavy thing. Now, before that, this chair at your back here used to be Seriki Abbas realization chair then. For someone to own this early 18th century, show how wealthy he was in the slave because that era, we Africans, we sat on the floor, on a mat, on a log, or on a bamboo chair. So imagine someone that owned this earlier to show how wealthy he was in the slave trade. Now, we call this thing gallow, G-A-L-L-O-W. The gallow, they normally mount the gallow in the plantation where the slave used to work. If any slave commits any crime or he tries to run away, uh, the penalty is to be hung on gallow, gallows. Now, that chain that I show you in the first slave cell will be tied around the ribs of the men. They will not tie the hand at the back. And then the women, two hands, up, they will suspend them. And they will be here dying gradually. They're just trying to instill in fear into other slaves. That if you fuck up, this is what will happen to you. And as you see them, they will never last for a day till they are dead on gallows. Especially the men, because of the heaviness of it, the chain will be eating their ribs and blood will be dropping gradually just to put fear into other slaves now this picture uh, it got to some level the slave around the caribbeans they can they can't take it anymore they started revolting around 1791 there's a man called tuzent louvetius of haiti he led some slave about over 200 slaves and they kill and they kill all the slave merchants in santo domingo republic then today known as haiti they massacre they kill all the whites in Haiti. Then 
Haitians got their independence. After many years back, the French came back to them that they should pay damages for killing their people and they were being forced to borrow money from their banks. That's why the black Haitians were so poor up to date. And my question is this, we, what the hell African leaders we are really doing? Because I believe we are the one who support to fight for reparation. Not the American or even the European. That's to tell that we don't have leaders in this part of the country or in this part of the world. Now, this one, there's some groups. We call them Christian, humanitarian or abolitionists, who rise up against the street and say, no, these black people, they are not subhuman. They are human beings like us. We must stop this trade. And eventually, when the breaches, or whatever they call themselves, put stop to the trade, the slave here were jubilating for freedom. And I used to tell people that there's nothing good as good to be a free man. Now, this man is popular among the Yorubas. His forefather, too, were the one be born in the plantation, because a child of a slave is still a slave. So we call the name Darusha. I don't know if you guys ever hear when Yoruba say, Jehovah saw me the Darusha, this man they are referring. He still have houses and family in Lagos Island up till day. And this man was so rich to the extent that if you want to dry clean his clothes in the UK, and it was so general that he gives out money to people. Like my sister here, maybe if I should probably I buy you a bottle of Coke and you're still experiencing gala, say, Obaniwa, she will sub me the Dara. Do you want to tell me to Darusha that spend money? Yeah. That is something like that. Now, the picture below here, as you can see, these were some of the children of Sediki William Sabas, the guy I was telling you this story. Now, right from here, now, I'm taking you to see the mausoleum, the tomb where Seriki Abbas was being buried. Now, let's do that quickly. Now, Seriki Abbas died 11 June 1919, and when he died, this is where he was buried by the family, the Muslim community, and the Brazilians. And this man had 128 wives and 144 children. And this is the tomb of the large child of 144. His name is Saka Ajao William Sabas. He was born in 1913. He died in 1987. So. Hey guys, we, we've, we've checked some rooms and it's quite obnoxious, same distance. 40 inmates in a small cell is very, very um, Notions and preposterous, so preposterous, right? So, but we are going out to check the point of no return. But I want you guys to know, like, we have suffered. You need to read a book about how Europe underdeveloped Africa, so to understand how our leaders were part of the, the, um, the our underdevelopment, how they subjected us, how they traded us to the Europeans. So, we need to understand this fact that the blame is not only to the Europeans. But the blame should also be checked on our leaders, traditional leaders. Do you see how they trade? And they traded 40 prison inmates just for one bottle. It, 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 it's just out of it. But don't worry, we just for, for that check it. And the underdevelopment of Africa is not only as a result of um, our, non, uh, non, non, a bit, our lack of education, but it's as a result of our ignorance, how we enslaved ourselves.